This is the MakerBase MKS Robin E3, a low-cost 32-bit control board designed as an easy replacement on the Creality Ender 3, and this is the MKS TFT35 version 1, a TFT touchscreen for the Robin E3. Today I'm going to give you a quick setup guide for both of these and also a review of my thoughts and recommendations for what to buy if you're looking for an Ender 3 control board upgrade and of course TFT upgrade with that. When getting the Robin E3 out of the box, one of the first things you realise is that the build quality is really quite nice. The clarity of the printing and positioning of the written notes on the PCB really help when identifying the right connectors to use, and the pins are also labelled on the underside of the board as well, although this is obviously less useful after it's been installed. For the TFT35, the PCB detailing is not quite as good, but it's no worse than any other PCB you typically find. Again, overall first impressions of the build quality are really good. So moving on to installation then, it's mostly easy. Remove the cover on the printer, remove all the connectors from the original control board, and then plug them back in in approximately same place. If you're going to use a TFT screen, you can remove the original graphical LCD cable, as you'll need the 8-pin one that's provided with the TFT screen instead. You can use the original LCD instead if you prefer. Either way, I've made this diagram to help you with all the wiring setup in case you get stuck. I did say mostly easy though, because unfortunately the hot end fan uses screw terminals on the original control board, but on the Robin it uses a plug. I've got crimp tools and terminals, so fixing this was a reasonably easy process for me, but for most people I imagine that could be somewhat of a deal breaker. You'll have to find a way around it. One way to get around this would be to put the wires in the same screw terminals as the power supply input, but this isn't really a very good practice, so not a great start. Nevertheless, let's carry on. To mount the TFT screen, you won't be able to use the original Ender 3 panel, so I've designed a simple one that you can print out on your Ender 3 if you choose to get this, or any other printer for that matter, so you can mount the TFT screen very easily. Four M3x6mm screws are enough to hold it in place, and the mount uses the original two M5 screws. Creating this design was really quite easy. The GitHub repository from MakerBase is really well populated, with user manuals, diagrams, schematics, and of course the modified Marlin firmware for the Robin E3, which ensures they comply with the open source requirements, so good job there. One of the biggest reasons for me to upgrade the Ender 3 control board is noise. 256 microsteps, either interpolated or real, greatly reduce the vibration on the printer, and therefore by extension, the noise. This is exactly as expected with the Robin E3. The TMC2209 stepper drivers, which can support senseless homing via firmware modification, are soldered directly onto the control board, which allows for optimal heat dissipation. Heat sinks are also provided, just don't forget to attach them, otherwise they won't do anything. Fortunately, after it's all plugged in, you're all set up and ready to go, because the control board comes pre-configured for the Ender 3. If you want to update to the latest firmware for the control board and TFT, which are done separately by the way, then you can do that, and I would actually recommend it. I found the guides provided to be a little bit confusing, so here's a quick guide to help you with that process. For the main board, simply download the bin file from the GitHub that has the latest Marlin firmware. Place it onto the micro SD card, into the slot on the control board, and then reboot the printer. Very simple. For the TFT screen, go to the release files folder under the TFT35 firmware on the MakerBase GitHub, and download the zip for the latest release. Once you open the zip, you'll find a set of files for English and another language that's probably Chinese, but I don't know because my computer couldn't display the characters. To update the firmware, select everything, apart from maybe config if you've already modified yours or elsewhere. Simply copy them onto an SD card or USB, insert into the side of the TFD, not the control board, and then reboot. It's the same process for updating the configuration, simply copy the config file onto SD card, insert, and reboot. Alongside being 32-bit, the Robin E3 also adds optional support for the BL Touch, Near Pixels, Spread Cycle, and Dual Z mode. While each of these have different levels of difficulty in implementing, it's nice that the control board is there to support your potential upgrades. Personally, I've not actually tested any of these non-standard features, but just so you know, they are there if you want to have them. The functionality of the TFT is really good. It's worth noting though that this doesn't function the same way as a graphical LCD that you may be used to. 
it has its own independent processor and it basically acts like a mini computer connected over USB that sends commands to the control board. I guess this doesn't really matter too much for the end users because on the surface, the interface offers a very similar selection of controls, but it's worth keeping in mind for any upgraders and modders out there. Unfortunately, the move functions on the TFT are kind of confusing. The X and Y arrows are pointing diagonally for some reason, and the arrangement on the screen is not particularly intuitive. Also, there's no temperature status or position status on the screen, so you won't have any of that information until you're printing. Again, if you're just going straight into printing, then that's not going to matter too much, but it can be irritating when you want to do some setup or other things. There is also a leveling assist function in the TFT menus, which moves the nozzle to the four corners of the bed, so you can then adjust the screws. The positions though were not particularly ideal, the icons didn't match up with where it was on the printer, and there was no point for the center. So I've modified the configuration file to make that function a little better. There'll be a link to my TFT config file in the description below. Next up, the filament loading sequence. Unfortunately, it loads way too fast and the nozzle just can't keep up. So it ends up skipping steps. So I've decided to modify this in my config again. Although honestly, I don't find it that useful for an Ender 3 because you can manually load so easily. It just seems a little bit excessive to have it automated. So as you might have gathered, most of the functionality on the touchscreen can be quite easily adjusted if that's something you want to do. You can do this on the touchscreen itself using a very deep and slightly difficult to navigate menu system or by using the configuration file that I've mentioned earlier. Simply open it in a text editor, make the changes you want and save them. You can then move it to the SD card and reboot and you'll be up and ready to go. The one thing you don't seem to be able to configure with the TFT are preheat options. Strangely, speaking of SD cards, it's notable that there isn't one included with the control board or the TFT. However, you can use the micro SD card from the original board to transfer to the Robin. But for the TFT, you'll need a full size SD card or any USB drive. If you don't have one laying around, you might need to get hold of one. The availability of both USB and SD card is great, and there's no configuration to switch between the two. When you want to go to print, you select which one you want, and then you just select the file out of that storage. Because of the TFT essentially being a separate computer though, you can't actually use the control board SD card as a location for print files. So they're all based off the files on the TFT. As a quick side note here, there is an option for a screen with front loading SD card and USB. I've not tested those, so I don't know how good they are, but I found them on the store and they look like they could be great alternatives if you think you may have issues with side access especially since the TFT35 is wider than the original display. After you've inserted your SD or USB, selecting a print can be actually a bit of a pain. You'll only receive icons for G-codes from Kira, so I just got generic icons with everything that I made from Prusa Slicer, which makes selecting a print quite difficult as the text is also pretty small. If you're thinking these physical transfer methods of SD and USB are really not your cup of tea, there's also a Wi-Fi option, so just for you. To set this up, you'll need to purchase the Wi-Fi module when you buy the TFT screen, and then modify the config file with your Wi-Fi SSID and password to enable the printer to connect to your network. You can also use access point mode, but I didn't find that worked quite as great as just connecting it to the network as you typically would. To enable transfer of print files, you will need Cura and the MKS Wi-Fi plugin. Without that, you can just transfer firmware to either the TFT or for the control board. Once you've got that plugin though, you just need to restart Cura and the plugin will be enabled. And then you can prepare and slice as normal, but you'll now receive an additional export option to upload directly to the printer over Wi-Fi. But I found this to be a little bit buggy and the print started without actually doing part of the G-code, so it was just kind of printing midair, and yeah, that wasn't particularly great. My preferred option is to export the file locally, so to your computer, maybe like you typically would, then go to the monitor tab in Cura, where you can send a local file to the printer. This was much more reliable in transfer and starting the print as you would expect. You can actually send any G-code files, so if you want to slice in Prusa Slicer and then transfer using Cura, you can do that as well. I'm a little concerned about connecting my printer to the internet though. I mean, what sort of things could the firmware do while connected? How easy is, is, is it for others to connect to my printer and do things that I don't want them to do? Honestly, I'm not totally sure. I'm not an expert in this regard, so it's a bit of a concern for me. 
you are able to connect to the printer using the Megabase cloud printing service as well. But this just raises more red flags for me and something I don't find myself being comfortable with just yet. That being said, while connected over Wi-Fi, it does offer a fairly okay dashboard on Cura that will allow you to monitor temps and pause the print. Sadly, the pause only has a Z offset, so it sits right above the print. And I think additions of preheat options, temperature, fan and speed adjustments during printing would make that Wi-Fi a great utility. There is also a file name length limit for some reason, so you'll likely have to rename any files that you wish to upload. For printing, there's really very little to report. The noise levels are greatly reduced, which for me is a major bonus, but one which is typically achieved by any 32-bit control board, or even just a control board using any TMC 2000 series drivers. Those more micro steps really do help. I've run a small number of test prints and the print quality doesn't appear to be meaningly affected in any significant way. There is another version of the Robin as well called the E3D, which has nothing to do with E3D Online, the nozzle and extruder company. It's just the version comes with swappable drivers, hence the D. The costs are different, but will be dependent on what drivers you use. If you already have some good drivers and you don't need to buy more, then this could be a good alternative for you. So looking at the price, the Robin E3 goes for around £23 or $28, with the TFT coming in at around £17 or $21. If you want the Wi-Fi, you can buy this with the TFT for an extra approximately $3. For reference, the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 in various versions is around £26 or $32 for the mainboard, and the equivalent screen is approximately equivalent price. So overall, this does make the Robin E3 come in just under the price of the Big Tree Tech equivalent. I have to say, for most of the time using this board, I was very impressed but the issue with the fan connector is worth considering how you're going to deal with before buying. The main thing really that let this down was the little configuration issues, just here and there, and I ended up finding quite a few. Mainly related to the TFT functionality though. Luckily for you, I've fixed most of those and I'll make that config file available for download in the, well, via the link in the description. So overall, considering all that, I'd say this is still a good product and one that I can recommend. Full disclosure time, control board, TFT screen, and Wi-Fi module were all provided to me by MakerBase for the purposes of review, and no money has changed hands. So that's it from me today. Hopefully this has been really useful for anyone looking at new control boards, specifically for the Ender 3. Hopefully I've given you a really good rundown of all the different things this control board can do and how good it is at doing them. Of course, there is a link below for the 3D printed TFT adapter, and also for my configuration file for the TFT itself. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.